Embrace Hollywood. We're here with Randall, and I'm gonna choose. Um, it's fine. I get why they'd be suspicious of me. Good. Don't take it too personally, okay? Just how things work around here for now, anyway. He glanced away for a moment, an idle smile flickering across his lips. Anyway, come on over to the couch. Let me introduce you to a few folks. Once they meet the big ol' evil Michiko and the what the big ol' evil? What? Maybe they'll warm up to you. <laughs> what the fuck? He already has a nickname for me. With one hand gently steering my shoulder. At least it's gently now. Like, didn't he forcibly do it once? I don't know. Maybe that was he. Or somebody. No, no, it was Marcus in the very beginning. Randall led me through the throng of vampires and I felt numerous gazes on me as we passed by. We ended up in front of a small group sprawled on the sofa and chairs. The conversation quickly dying down as we approached. Hey everyone. Give Michiko here your best welcome. A mumble, a chorus of highs and haze rose up from the group, not exactly ringing with enthusiasm. But I noticed one girl hadn't said anything at all, and judging from his raised eyebrow, Randall had noticed too. It's a writer girl, right? What, a, what was that, Marla? Come on, cut the sulking act for a minute and give her that winning smile you got. When he addressed the girl, a pretty vampire with a wealth of curly hair restrained by a headband, she let out a long groaning sigh. Alright, alright. Hi, newbie. I'm Marla. I fix cars and kick the asses of people who mess with our clan. You might want to keep that in mind. Oh, okay, I guess you're not the writer girl. Hi, Marla. I'm Ichigo. <laughs> you have a business card. My death chariot needs a tune-up. I'll file that away under things I don't really care about. Not but stay silent. You know what? She wants to be all ambitious towards me. I'm just gonna be polite. I'm Ichigo. Yeah, I know. Hi. Uh, you know, I'm still gonna be the classy girl I am. She responds stiffly, making no attempt to hide her mistrust. Alright, now over here, I've got Marla's boyfriend. Oh. I thought she was, like, liking Randall, that's why she was all offensive, but she has a boyfriend. And our resident gunsmith, Ziggy. He pointed towards a young Asian like, Asian guy leaning against Marla's side, his shaggy black hair obscuring one eye. Black hair? No, it was a red- It was a red lightning bolt. No, it was just hair. Another vision. Wait, what? The fuck? I'm seeing shit. What, what, what's the secret? Ziggy smiled shyly at me, nodding his head a little. Cat got your tongue or what? Do you like spiders from Mars? fuck are these answers? Well, let's just say hello to him too. He nodded at me again, mumbling out something that was probably a U2, but I couldn't quite tell. Eh, Zig never really says a whole lot, but he's a good kid. Good guns too. Most of us have to pack the heat when we go near Hollywood these days. And let's see, this fine lady here is Jaquana? Jaquana? Our damsel from the age of Wild West. The next vampire Randall motioned to was a much older woman, probably in her 70s, who looked Hispanic, with long gray hair and a wrinkled face. She's everyone's grandma, except instead of baking cookies, she likes to sharpshoot motherfuckers who cross too many lines. Step on her toes and she'll, also, she'll lasso your ass and dangle you off a cliff. Howdy, Michiko. That little jig you pulled at the parking garage damn near had my sides splitting open. Just try not to pull it again, or else I might have to split your sides open. Hmm? At least she's more talkative compared to other people. Flashing me a teasing grin, Jaquana broke out into a deep, deep raspy laughter that Randall instantly joined in on. That was a one-time thing, don't worry. Sorry, no promises. Stay silent, watch them stay silent and smile ominously. Fuck. Those, these stay silent things is kind of creepy. That was a one-time thing, don't worry. Well, you turn it back around on old queen bitch and won't be hearing any, any more complaints from me. She waved a finger in the air then jabbed it towards me encouragingly. Alright, alright. Last but not least, our new and lovable scaredy cat. Oh yeah, you guys already met, didn't you? Did I? As Rona just to the last man on the couch, I realized I'd seen him before. <laughs> the guy I fucking beat up. The same thug who was guarding the parking garage. <laughs> I beat him up. Oops. When our eyes met, he grimaced and quickly looked away, pulling his head further over his head. He was one of the newest vampires in LA before he came along with Chico, so he doesn't know his ass from a hole in the ground either. Go on, Jack. Don't be shy. Yeah, I'm Jack. He cleared his throat, eyes starting nervously between Randall and me. That big fight we had, you know, I just faked falling down. Follow followed you down to the garage after all, but Randall looked like he had it covered, so I didn't do anything. Ah, uh, big fight. When did we have a big fight? That was some great acting. No wonder you're in Hollywood. Well, I'm glad we both healed up fine. We both healed up fine. Yeah, I mean, whatever. <laughs> okay, I think that's everyone. 
What about the writer girl, the journalist? Lala clearing his throat, ran on eye track for a moment, who sank back into the sofa as Jaquana patted his shoulder. Alright guys, me and Michigo let you go back to whatever gossip you're throwing around. You're not staying. Give me a few minutes, I gotta talk to Michigo outside about something. You do? His eyes started over to meet mine, tinged with a sharp curiosity. Um... It was nice to meet you all. Let's be kind, let's be kind. Well, you two take care, uh, take care out there, and if any hopheads on the beach give you trouble, let me know and I'll pick them off from the window. Yeah, maybe don't do that. <laughs> With that, we left the laughing group to themselves, so their gazes to follow Rando after we turned away. Somehow the room's energy seemed to, fo seemed to be focused on him, like everyone was always aware of Rando's presence, even if they weren't actively watching his towering figure. Man, he has some aura. Outside, Randall lowered himself onto the porch of stairs, motioning me to sit down beside him. The waves gently crashed and fell in the distance, rippling beneath the moonlight. Hope I didn't throw you off too much back there. But hey, I don't like to break the ice so much as smash it in with a fucking hammer. Thanks for trying, but they're really not my type. Uh, yeah, I can see that. You did a good job. I understand the clan a little better now. I'm not gonna be like, they're not my type. What the heck? That's rude. Well, thanks, newbie. It means a lot to me hearing you say that. They all come from different places, and they've got a real different story. They have, they've got real different stories, but everyone comes together here. He pauses, gaze flicking from side from my face to the dark ocean. Beside us, behind us, sorry, behind us, I could hear the muffled sounds of laughter and chatter drifting warmly from his side. Oh, creepy, ampy music. When Randall turned back to me, a faint shadow clouded his face. It was a different look from the one he'd worn inside the house, almost defensive. So, if you really weren't sent here by Cherise, I'm guessing there's something on your mind, right? Well, Cherise told me I should find a mentor. You seem like the nicest vamp. <laughs> the Empire of Nets, so I came to ask for help. Uh, for your help, sorry. I just feel sort of lost, getting thrown into this world is a lot to take in. Which one should I say? The first or the third? Maybe the third. Uh, yeah. Randall fell silent for a moment, chewing on his lower lip. It's true, I think most new vampires feel like that, getting torn away from everything they know. In this world, it's pretty much sink or swim. You deal with it do you deal with what fate gives you and make the most of it, or you die trying. Clear cut and brutal. He let a long deep sigh, watching you broodingly for a long few moments. Would I be a burden if you took me under your wing? Well I didn't come here for a pity party, I can always find someone else. <sighs> I don't want to be like, please, Randall. Um, would I be a burden? Or, well, I didn't come here for a pity party. Would I be a burden? Fuck's sake, kid. Don't pull that guilt trip shit on me. I already got a soft heart. You don't have to trample on it. You're not a burden either. You're an unlucky newbie, and I get it. I get that. With a frustrating grin, <laughs> Randall ran a hand through the back of his hair. He seems to be wrestling with his own thoughts. Look. I might be able to help you figure things out if you tell me what you want now that you're a vampire. You do know what you want, right? No, not really. <laughs> no one's ever asked me that. Um, I want to have friends and be close to people again. I feel like I'm all alone now. I want to become a power player, not somebody's lackey. I want to do whatever the hell I want. I have to learn more about this world before I make any decisions. I'm torn on the first one. In the last one. Hmm. I have to learn more. Huh. I guess that's pretty smart. Or at least would normally be smart. Coming in right now though. With tension so high. And everyone's backstabbing their bunkmates. Anything you learn probably won't be pretty. He fiddled one of the laces on his feet. Staring down at the footstep. Footprint, sorry, footprint covered sand for a few moments. Alright. Now listen to me for a second. Chico. I like your style, so I'm gonna make you an offer. You keep worried of the queen bitch, for now, at least. You don't have to act happy about it, but don't make her think you're a threat either. If she tries to make any moves against me or makes a treaty with the ghouls to take us down, tell me as soon as you can. She might slip you false information, but I can usually sniff out the truth. And in return, I'll teach her how to keep her spirits as a vampire in LA, the way me and my group stay strong. Maybe it'll help you figure out yourself a little more. How's that sound, newbie? Vandal, you have yourself a partner. <laughs> Sign me up, but could you stop calling me newbie? Alright, I'm in. For now. 
Well, we had to be on his side, so Vandal, you have yourself a partner. His eyes twitched a bit. Did he not like being called his name? Hey. Uh, no, wait, Vandal isn't his name, though. Vandal, hey. You're pretty out there, kid. That's alright. It's growing on me. <laughs> he stuck out a large, calloused hand for me to shake, staring intently into my eyes. As I reached out for his hand, I noticed a bandage in the middle of his palm, though there wasn't any smell of blood. Hey, don't leave me hanging here. Randall lean, leaned forward to, <laughs> to clasp both his hands around my own, dwarfing it in, dwarfing it in his giant palms. After a few shakes, he used, he used his hold to pull me in a little closer. I couldn't tell if it was on purpose or just something he did on instinct, considering the aggressive na nature of his blood. And Michiko, the first thing I want you to learn is to always obey yourself. Wow, you're totally different from fucking Marcus. Don't trust anyone. And he's always and Randall's here is like self love and shit. Randall's fingers tightened a little bit around my hand, squeezing almost painfully hard. Obey myself? What is that even mean? Never believe anyone is better or more worthy than you. Never let your mind be a slave to someone or something else. Oh. No masters, no idols, no kings. I hope you take that to heart. Oh shit, so I shouldn't have a pet. Cause he's not into the <laughs> He's not into people that are like that, right? Even after he stopped speaking, his quiet words echoed in my mind, like a tolling bell slowly fading into silence. Was he threatening me? Warning me? Testing me? I think he's just advising me. Whatever it was, I could tell he wasn't kidding around. Alright, I remember that. Is there a reason you're telling me this? I won't bow down to anyone, Randall. You can count that. I can't even bow down to you, is what you're telling me. Because you're not trustworthy either. Is that what you're telling me? Is there a reason you're telling me this? It's the most important thing to remember. And I never want us to stand on different levels. A smirk warmed onto his lips. And he gave my hand one last strong squeeze before letting me go. Or finally letting me go. We share no body warmth, obviously, but I still feel the roughness of his bandaged palms lingering on my skin. <sighs> this is confusing. Good, I got a promising feeling about this, and I hope that you put your mind to rest to, to rest some, kid. Don't want you going back sadder than a box of kittens in the rain. Listen, I need to get some planning done for a little Ascari party crash I'm doing tomorrow. Don't want you to think I'm kicking you out, but I kinda am. Grinning apologetically, Randall pushed himself to his seat, rubbing the small of his back. Then he extended the hand palm down to help me out. My hesitation must have been obvious because Randall let out a bark of laughter. No squeezing this time, I promise. Uh, alright, but only because you promised. Take his hand, grab his hand with a squeeze, I'm cut. Thanks, stand up on myself. No, I, I'll, I'll squeeze his hand. Randall winked at me as I grabbed his hand, letting him pull me onto my feet. But as I turned to step off the porch, Randall stopped me, tugging lightly on the back of my jacket. Hey, Michiko, night after tomorrow, how about we grab some drinks, say around midnight? Wow! Already a date? There's a place called Saturnalia, run by one of Shri's bitch boys. <laughs> He doesn't deserve that. But at least he serves the stuff that will make us sick. Sure, why not? It'll be good to let off some steam. Are you asking me out? <laughs> I've got nothing better to do. I'll pencil you in. I'll pencil you in? Well, I've never heard that. Are you asking me out? I'm just asking you to chat with me over a glass of oh, type O negative, that's all. It'll be a quiet place for us to get to know each other a little better. Then I'll be there. I've got nothing better. Sounds fun, but you're buying. No, I'm not gonna be that fucking rude. But then I'll be there. Alright, I'll see you then. You can ask someone at the hotel for directions. Those Iskari fuckers are always hanging out there. It's so weird because I was an Iskari, so now hearing him like diss on my house? Shit. No, enjoy the rest of your night, kid. And hey, I'm glad you came by. Bye. It's so... It's so... I'm not, I'm not like, I'm still attached to the scary house, even though I wasn't really into it. After I stepped off the patio and back onto the beach, Randall gave me one last warm smile. I called out a farewell, but my voice was swallowed by the drone of endless waves crashing on the shore. Okay. Interesting. I am a ninja spy now. <laughs> I spent the rest of the night exploring LA's dark secrets, observing the world with my keen new senses. But this is where I am going to stop for today. Covering up Andre, cause screw him. Screw him and everything he believes in. But anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful and I'll see you guys in the next one.